Hello rabbit lovers, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how I make, how I make keychains out of extra rabbit parts. Many people have heard of rabbit foot keychains. Usually it's the back left foot that people consider as lucky. But this is a rabbit foot keychain. But you can also make them out of tails and front feet as well, so it doesn't just have to be the back feet. It's actually easier to attach little dangle little hooky things when it's not on a foot. In order to cover the bone part you have to kind of put the top on wonky whereas on a tail or a front foot, well, I do have some front feet I just can't find them right now. On a tail or a front foot it just goes on straight. A few years ago when we butchered our first rabbits we wanted to make sure and use the sacrifice of the rabbits to the best of our ability and use every part of the rabbit and in doing our research, we discovered about lucky rabbit foot keychain things and preserving rabbit feet. So we tried it, and I'm not sure if we read the instructions wrong or if our instructions were different than most people's. But instead of soaking them in rubbing alcohol and then doing borax on them or something similar to that like most people do, we just did the first step and didn't do the second step. And we still, like, they're fine. They haven't, like, rotted or been gross or anything. So they're just, like, normal feet. So that's how I've been doing it ever since. And that's how I'm going to show you how we do it today. So in case you're wondering why I don't have the second step in there, is because we just haven't ever done it and it turns out fine. Oftentimes when I butcher a rabbit, I don't have time to tan the hide and, I don't know, pickle or preserve the feet and tail right away. So I'll just stick them in the freezer, freshly butchered, until I'm ready to use them. And that is what I did with the ones we're going to do now. So now I'm going to take you with me as I preserve some feet and stuff. So this is a bag of what used to be frozen feet and tails and stuff. I think this is all from one rabbit. You can totally do freshly butchered feet, but these are just used to be frozen feet. I just defrosted them and now I'm going to wash them. After I squeezed each of them out really good so they'd be pretty dry, I stuck them in a jar. It's a half pint jar. I feel like it's just tall enough for the rabbit foot and then that's like the tallest part of the tail and the front feet are smaller. And I stuck them each with the bone side down so it'll be fully submerged in the rubbing alcohol. I don't know if this is super important but you know if there's a little room at the top I'd much rather it be the really tips of the feet and the toenails and stuff not fully submerged in the alcohol rather than the most important nasty gross bone and muscle part. So now I have both front feet, both back feet and the tail all in this jar. I have room for more things in there but I don't really have anything else defrosted so we're just doing this one rabbit today and then I can always reuse the rubbing alcohol solution to cure another batch of feet and tails and stuff. And then I have rubbing alcohol it's 91%. I don't know if that matters, but we're just going to fill it up. So I filled it so that everything is covered as much as possible. It's almost about to overflow, but not quite. So now I'm going to put a lid on it and then make sure I mark the date on the lid so I don't forget what day it is because I know that I was like, oh yeah, I'll totally remember I did this on Wednesday, but then I'll forget. I'm like, wait, what day is it? Because it's two days after that you have to do something else to it. So now I'm going to let these feet and stuff sit fully submerged in the alcohol for two days. Then after two days, I'll take them out of the rubbing alcohol, squeeze them down, soap them, wash them, and then let them dry on a paper towel. Just like these ones here, and now it's a few days later, they're all dry. And so now I'm going to show you with these ones how I put the keychain things. They're just like jingle bells, how I attach them. So. So I like to use jingle bells as the little topper things, basically. Uh, I'd show you, but I lost my needle nose pliers, so um, I had to improvise and it's kind of really difficult. So if you have needle nose pliers, do those. But basically all you do is you pry apart these little four things, and then take the little jingler out, and then take a foot or whatever you want. But basically all you do is you glue the tops to the feet, Thank you. 
I used hot glue, but it's not really the strongest type of glue you could do, but these aren't really going to be, like, yanked or anything real much. I'm not going to attach them to a zipper, so I don't, I'm not going to use this as a zipper or anything. If I use it at all, it's going to be an ornamental thing only, so if you want to use some, like, stronger glue, you can, but I just use hot glue and it's fine. It's, it's pretty sturdy. And I glue the hot glue, like, onto the bell part and then stuck the foot in. When you do it on the foot, then put the bell in, it's kind of more difficult, at least for the hot glue part. So you could do it however you want, but I found that putting glue on the top and then putting on the foot is easier for me. So this is one way I use every part of the rabbit by turning the tails and feet into keychains. If I don't use the feet for keychains, I put them in our maggot bucket so they can make maggots for our chickens to eat so they don't go to waste, but keychains are a lot cooler and more fun than using them for maggot food. So yeah, that's how we do it. Pretty easy and works pretty well. Thanks for watching.